Hello, I'm JW, and this is a fairly short video about a repair. And the uh, item in question is a garden shredder. It's uh, one of these things that is basically just an electric motor attached to a revolving cutting blade. And uh, obviously you shove the uh, twigs, hedge cuttings, whatever else in there, and it chops them up into much smaller pieces. And the fault with the device is that it doesn't turn anymore, so uh, it doesn't actually do anything. Now, uh, the motor still makes kind of a buzzing sound, and if you uh, poke at it with a stick, then it does in fact rotate but uh, only very slowly and certainly not uh, with the kind of power that it should do. So uh, that kind of narrows it down to only one component, which is a capacitor. And uh, I've removed the capacitor from the device already. Here it is, just a uh, simple looking item, just two wires uh, coming out of there, and that bolt is just to uh, attach it to the frame of the device. And it's really got to be that because there's nothing else in there that can go wrong other than the uh, windings of the motor itself, and uh, that's fairly unlikely. And even if they had uh, gone, then of course it probably wouldn't actually uh, rotate when poked, and uh, fairly likely that it would have uh, blown a fuse or something. So uh, we'll just uh, check this one, and uh, I've actually got another one as well, a new replacement to uh, compare with. And then we'll uh, just fit the uh, new capacitor in the device and uh, see if it works. Now here's the capacitor from the device, and uh, as you can see it's just got the two wires here. This uh, is just purely for mounting, it doesn't actually have any uh, electrical connection there. And this particular one is a 16 microfarad, and also has the large number 16 on there. So uh, just to confirm this is faulty, we'll simply measure the uh, capacitance of this device, and obviously just use this uh, multimeter for that. So uh, this particular one has the uh, capacitance function down here, so I'll just switch that to the uh, appropriate range. And just a question of connecting the ends of the wires here. It doesn't have any terminals, it's just a direct wire connection. So if we connect this here, we should see if it's any good, of course. Uh, about 16 microfarads on the display. So, right, now there we go. Now uh, that's his 15, so it might give the impression that there's nothing actually wrong with it. But uh, in fact, it's all a lie because if you look carefully at the top of the display there, it's not 15 microfarads there. It's actually 15 nanofarad, so in fact a thousand times smaller than it should be. So pretty obviously that's totally wrecked, so uh, clearly uh, that is the problem. Or at least uh, it's not going to work unless that's replaced, so uh, we'll uh, dispose of that one. Now I've got another one here which is a replacement. It's slightly uh, different style, it's got the uh, spade type connectors on the top there. Same sort of mounting bolt and it's physically slightly larger, but. Uh, not going to actually matter because there's plenty of space inside the casing of the device to fit it in there. So this has two sets of terminals. Note these are actually just common together, so it's basically one here and one there. The only problem with these is just to make sure you are connecting the correct pair of terminals. Obviously it's uh, this one and this one. Certainly not uh, these two because that would be uh, shorting out the uh, connections to it and resulting in a big bang. So if we just connect the uh, wires again here and let's see what the value of this one is. Okay, well that's going up for 16.2, which is perfectly fine. I say this is supposed to be 16, and notice this time it does have in the top corner the correct microfarad symbol. So that's perfectly fine, and uh, is the correct kind of reading. So 16.2, well that's uh, well within the 5% claimed for the particular capacitor. So uh, we'll just pop outside then and uh, fit this into the device. I'll have to. Uh, adapt the wire slightly because the other one had just the, uh, the wires going directly to it which I've obviously just had to cut there so we'll just put some uh, terminals on the end of the bits on the machine, plug it in and then we can see if it works. Now here is the machine and the wires inside are actually a bit short to reach the capacitor terminal so just adding some additional pieces of wire here and uh, as shown in the previous uh, section the terminals are a different style so I'm going to have to just add on some uh, spade connectors onto the ends of these new wires. These are insulated ones to avoid shorting out onto the metal case, which is fairly close to the actual equipment. And we just crimp those on the end of the new pieces of wire there. Now these white wires are what are connected to the old capacitor, and as you can see they are rather short, so I'll just uh, strip the ends of those and use some crimps to join them to those new pieces of uh, brown and blue wire that I've prepared there. Thank you. 
and those terminals just press onto the spade ends on the capacitor. Again, polarity is not important here, it's just a uh, AC device obviously, so it uh, doesn't actually matter which way around the wires go. And it just slots into that bracket there with the uh, nut and uh, shake proof washer on the top. Now the capacitor is secured with that single nut on the top, so we'll just tighten that up and uh, fix that securely in place. And because the wires are moderately long there, then I'll uh, just put a cable tie around the body of the capacitor and the wires just to stop them uh, flapping about and uh, any possibility of getting tangled up in any moving part. So just uh, fix that around there. Now the lid for this is just a moulded plastic piece and uh, there's actually an earth wire which comes out which has to fix onto a little tab on the side of the motor housing. It's uh, fairly short there as you can see it's uh, a bit of a bother to get on whilst keeping the cover out of the way but uh, again that just uh, presses on and the cover just fits over the top there and it's actually fixed with three screws through the metal plate from the other side. Actually, though, the cutting blade is a bit rusty because it's been in the shed for nearly a year without actually being used, so uh, not exactly in the best condition, but uh, once that's put in use, it'll uh, soon clean away that rust. Now, the screws there, just one at the top and uh, one at the bottom, and there's also one at the back edge there, which I'll uh, fit in a bit later on. Now the top piece uh, has this metal plate which fits over the cutting blade with that sort of funnel shape bit to direct the material into the cutting area. And that matches up with the corresponding piece on the plastic top section which is not shown here. And that's fixed in with these two bolts and they just go through those two holes, one on each side. So the bolt simply goes through from above and then there's a corresponding nut which uh, fits it on from underneath. Actually they're fairly short, it's only going through a couple of layers of sheet metal. And we'll just use this uh, hexagonal key just to secure that there whilst uh, tightening it up from underneath. And the other side is exactly the same, so just uh, click that in and tighten that up. The uh, nuts on these actually have nylon inserts to uh, prevent them from working loose afterwards, so no washers required in this instance. Now the next part is to uh, reattach the legs, which are tubular steel, and they just have uh, two holes there, uh, two corresponding holes in the top of the leg itself. And again, it's a bolt through from the top and one of those nuts simply goes on the back. Now unfortunately there's actually only three bolts here, there should be four, but the uh, other one was missing and as far as I can tell it's been missing for many years, so no idea where that went. But uh, in case it only holds the leg on, it's not a safety critical component. So this leg will get two, and the uh, one at the lower edge will only get one. And this, and if you look at the bottom edge where the hole is, you'll see that the uh, hole on the bottom right doesn't have any paint loss around it so I have to wonder whether that was ever fitted even in the factory because uh, you would expect there to be a bit of uh, paint loss around the hole where the bolt had been fitted in. I'll put that on the floor there and the uh, only remaining part is the plastic top which is just a moulded plastic thing and it just sits over the top there and there's a turn wheel thing just to screw that into position. There is also a peg which goes into the uh, back of the switch so you can't turn it on with the lid removed because that will be very dangerous. So I'll just uh, position that uh, carefully and that's just a plastic thing that shoves in there to push the material into the shredder. So I'll just switch on the uh, switch there and I'll just plug that in and see if it works. Thank you. 
So there you go, that's all working perfectly now, so that can be put into use. And until next time, thanks for watching.